So apparently, we have a guest today. Who oh, invited the dark side? <laughs> oh. Well, what could go wrong on a perfect day like this? So today we're going to talk about expect the unexpected during the loan process. This is Moving Forward TV, and my name is Barry Horvath, and this is your local market update. You like how I rolled with that? <laughs> you did, even though you messed it up, you screwed up, you know, <laughs> hey, you rolled no, no. anyway. <laughs> I'm human, what can I say? Hi, and I'm Dylan Guest, and thanks for joining us today. So we have all kinds of bad guys with us yeah, today. Uh, so we've been, I've been told that when these guys show up, <laughs> you got problems. So. Yes, that is very true. <laughs> so here's a question, though, for <laughs> He's intimidating, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, and I want to know why is his lightsaber right over me directly? Because I told him that way. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks. He's my pal. He's, he, he's a good guy. You when? know, at the, at the end. <laughs> he, was a, he was a good guy in the beginning. And he was a good guy in the back. He was just the middle years. He, he had problems. What is good about Darth Vader? He's good in the beginning and he's good at the end. Okay. It's he, kinda, he died a good guy. Right. It's just like do it alone. It's good in the beginning because they bring you all their You're documents. Right. They're all excited. They're like, I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to buy a house. It's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. And at the end, you close. And it's good at the end, it's too. It's good because they it's get the house. the middle. The middle. <laughs> it's all messed So up. we're talking about the middle today. <laughs> all right. We're talking about expecting the unexpected. Did you right. ever read those books when you were pregnant? Because I've never been pregnant, so I never read them. But I've seen them in the store. I've seen them in the <laughs> store. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> you never read those? I don't remember. What I think I might have read one the first the, time. The series was What to Expect When You're Expecting. Yes. And it was about... I remember that. About... You pregnancy know, stuff pregnancy and everything. And what, you know, what to expect during it, because like weird things happen during pregnancy. <laughs> I'd like to compare that to the loan process. Because <laughs> weird things happen during the loan does, process. You know, just when you think. It's not you our know, fault. I'm going to tell you, the, the famous words in the loan industry right now are, this is the kiss of death statement. Okay. Worse than Darth Vader. <laughs> This file is so clean, it's a slam dunk. You know what that means? <laughs> You're going to have a flat tire. <laughs> the wheels are going to fall no, off. <laughs> it means run, run. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I know. bad. So let's talk about some of the things that can happen during the loan process that maybe you weren't expecting. You had no <laughs> idea this was going to happen. You know, in the, when when the beginning of a loan process, everybody is very positive, and you know, you try and get as much as you, you can up front. He, he laughs. He laughs. They come in, they're like, "Here's my W-2s and my bank statements. Everything's great. And my Everything's bank perfect. Stuff. I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun." Yeah. No. Ah. <laughs> and he laughs at me because I say, "Oh, this one's good. This is an easy file. It's good. Yeah, and perfect credit." And he just uh, like rod, but. <clears throat> Um, there are so many things that can go wrong. What might seem perfect on the outside. Right. Darth was a good guy in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he? yes, he, he was Anakin Skywalker. He was a great, he was oh, a good I kid. Brilliant. About that. Brilliant, How yes. How did he turn into Darth Vader? <laughs> well, he Is had... that a whole show? <laughs> yeah, that's a whole <laughs> Yeah, it's called. It's a whole show called Nerd Talk. <laughs> you can, all right, you can catch it on WeBeam TV. Catch it on WeBeam TV. All right. Okay. So let's talk about some of the things like, you know, that all of a sudden you're asked for and why you asked for them and right. and why does that pop up? So right. you know, we made we've compiled the list, the fun list as we call it, and the list you know, of things that pop up and it's like, well, why do you need that? So let's just pretend, Lynn. Right. I'm a regular person with. I'm not, just for the disclosure. 
Is there? My full disclosure. And I'm beginning to wonder if there is such a thing as a regular person. Well, and when I say a regular person, it means like you've worked on the same job for, for 20 years and you get a regular paycheck and they actually take taxes out. You're what we call the W-2 borrower with a pay stub and right. you get paid every other week. Right. So w what can happen with somebody? I gave you my pay stubs. So why do you need more now? What what happened? Right. What 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 transpired <laughs> after the first day when I loved you and brought you my documents you needed, and, and now you need more stuff? Tell me, Galen. Okay, so a couple of things happen. So again, when when it starts out initially, oh, this person has been on their job forever. They you know worked here forever in a year. He's playing with the toys in front. I don't like this guy. <laughs> so, what happens with him here? That's Kylo. Kylo Ren. They're all like bobbleheads. But they? anyway, all right. So Pictures bobble. Mine are bobble. Okay, so <laughs> you've um, you've provided your pay stub. You worked for the same job for a long time, but a couple of things happen. Um, not always is just the pay stub good enough. We always need tax returns and W-2s, and there's a couple of reasons for it. Sometimes we might have um, a husband and wife. Sometimes both of you are on the loan. Sometimes both of you are not on the loan. So the first reason people will give me their tax returns, and they're going to say, what do you want the W-2s for? All of the income is on the tax return. Here's why I need the W-2s. I need to know out of that you know, $100,000 that's on the page one of your tax return, how much of it was the husbands, how much of it was the wives or the borrower and the co-borrower. Um, we need the breakdown of what, what's what. Um, the other thing on pay stubs, <clears throat> sometimes people will be getting overtime, um, bonuses, things like that. So we need those things broken out. We need to get what's called a written verification of employment. So we're going to send out for that. So you need there's more things, stuff already. There's more stuff already. There's <laughs> things that are out of our control. And when we when we start pulling the whole picture together, um, and they're, and they're time-sensitive documents, so I can't get a verification of employment when someone is at pre-qualification stage because it might take them four months to find a house. Well, guess what? I'm going to need a new verification of employment that has his overtime and his bonuses and everything else broken out. I want to buy a vowel. Because <laughs> <laughs> already... You just did the first thing, and right. it's already like this big deal. And all what right. about the tax returns? Right, so what happens now... Let's right just off suppose, on the tax returns. Yeah, you you know you got the tax returns, so now you need full tax returns. That's what people get confused by. It's like I'm a simple W two pay stub, right? Nine to five worker, Monday through Friday, been doing this for twenty years, and now you need tax returns. So right. you know what? I I don't even want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> you know what I want to do? I want to go eat Greek fruit salad. <laughs> Sounds much better than <laughs> than that? talking tax Can returns. Get back to Darth Vader. <laughs> So let's see what Casey's cooking up, but I heard it's really good. I'm Casey Quaretti, this is Chat and Dish, and yeah, there's a million fruit salads out there and they're all easy to make, but this one is a little bit different and super yummy. We're going to dress it up just a tiny bit. Start off with blueberries. To that, we are going to add the zest of one lemon. We're going to add a couple of bananas. I'm just getting them ready so that I can give them a nice little rough chop. This is probably the only time in life you will hear me say it doesn't really matter how sharp your knife is. I'm a crazy fanatic for using the sharpest knife possible. Bananas go in with the blueberries. Okay, let's attack these gorgeous strawberries and get them cut into nice bite-sized chunks Let's get our strawberries in with our blueberries. Mmm, so good. And bananas. I love the combination of basil and strawberries, blueberries and lemon zest. So in this salad, I'm combining all of those together. I've just got some basil leaves, I'm going to roll them up real tight and then I'm going to slice them very finely. It's actually called chiffrenade, just means very fine little slices. What makes this salad so yummy and so easy is using Greek vanilla yogurt. That's our dressing. It's absolutely fantastic in combination with our fresh fruits. I'm just combining the yogurt with the fruit. I'm doing it kind of gently in a bit of a circular motion. I want the dressing to be spread all over our fruit, but I don't want to smush our bananas. I bet you thought I forgot the basil leaves. Well, I didn't. I get the dressing on and then I go ahead and stir in about half of the basil leaves and then I give it a 
another little half with a sprinkle here, and that's it. I like to serve the salad well chilled, so I'm gonna cover it and pop it into the refrigerator, but I think I need to do a taste test first. Mm. Mm. This is fantastic. Listen, my strawberries are really ripe and very juicy. If your strawberries are really tangy, very beginning of the season, feel free to add a couple of tablespoons of honey in here. That'll sweeten them right up. In the meantime, thanks for visiting, sharing fruit salad with me, and until next time, I'm gonna miss you. Ciao. I have a question. Yes. How do we go from Darth Vader, <laughs> loans, all these little bobbleheads, to something really good because like Greek we, fruit salad. we needed something good <laughs> <laughs> thrown into all the darkness there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I love her. She's just, I know. She's really I know. unbelievable. So that's that was that stuff. was the little bit of good that we had. <laughs> right, now the rest of the show is going to totally stink and the rest be bad. Of the, the rest of the challenging <laughs> stuff. I don't like to say so, the bad stuff. The challenging stuff. The unexpected let, stuff that let, pop so up on I think if you're going to the process expecting the unexpected. Yeah. You'll be a happier camper in the end. Yeah, yeah. You know, reality. Setting proper expectations. It's very, and you know what? Getting back real quick to um, the tax returns. I know that we already did the tax returns, yeah. but real quick, the other thing, just so that you know, unreimbursed employee expenses. So once we do see those tax returns on somebody who's been there for over a year, they're allowed to write certain things off, and some people take advantage of this, and some people don't take advantage of it. But they write it off, it's going to affect us. So. And that stuff sometimes doesn't come up until the 4506 if the tax returns aren't gotten up front. So. All right. So speaking of taxes, what if they didn't, what if they had a balance due and they owe the IRS money? Now what? <laughs> and when do we find that out? Because there's really, Pay you know, when you apply. your taxes. You know what? When you apply for a loan, there's really, unless you disclose that, you owe money to the IRS. It doesn't show up on credit. No. You know, you're like, why didn't you tell me that? Well, why didn't you tell us that? <laughs> I know. You didn't tell me it wasn't paid. Yeah, so tell <laughs> us about of the time, that. What the, happens with Okay, that so, so when you owe on your tax returns, Here. it is due. The tell IRS... Me. Tell Stormtrooper. <laughs> tell the storm. <laughs> the IRS um, expects the payment when you send in your return, right? When you send your return and your payment is due. However... <laughs> Put him over here. If you Keep owe a here. lot of money, sometimes the pay, the IRS will make uh, payment arrangements for you. <clears throat> However, keep in mind in lending, if there is a payment arrangement that has been made with the IRS, you have to have at least made at least three payments before they will um, allow that payment um, to be in there. So really? most of the time, so yeah, so so really? point out. <laughs> I learned something today. <laughs> so if you have not paid your taxes, please bring it up to your loan officer. Yeah, and they, if you have payment arrangements and things. Otherwise, it's it, you're, it's going to count into your debts. Yeah. And it, now all of a sudden you don't qualify. And if you are, and if you do have to pay it, if it's like now right. and you say, okay, well, you, you, this has to be paid. Keep in mind that your lender is going to need to know where you got the money to pay it. Oh. Hopefully it's not the down payment money. Which segues <laughs> me into our next point. All right, Dylan, I got, I owe money to the IRS and, and my great, 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 great grandpappy <laughs> gave me some money and I had a, what a guy. I had a large deposit. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. All right. The other, the other big thing. On <laughs> so we have a large deposit down. that just suddenly showed up on our bank statement. Right. Things that slow down uh, the loan application and process uh, that requires further documentation, <laughs> more paperwork that more we have to gather, stormtroopers that slow is large down. deposits. So all of a sudden, somebody has five thousand dollars that just pops into their account from their great that's grandpappy, not, pappy, pappy, or whatever not, you that's said. That's not normal. That's, <laughs> that's an abby, normal. That's what we call an abby normal. Abby deposit. normal. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes, I love that. That's from Young Frankenstein. Okay, good, good. Another great Mel Brooks film. Yeah, anything by Mel Brooks. That's yeah. hilarious. I love that. But but anyway, Happy so um, the when you have a large deposit that appears on your bank statement, we have to track where it came from. Um, not only you know a letter from you saying, oh yes, this came from you know my grandfather or. I sold my motorcycle or something like that, but we have to get support documentation. So we have to see the deposit. If grandpa gave you a check 
a check. I need to see a copy of that check. If you sold your motorcycle, I need to see a copy of your title. I need to see a copy, copy of the bill of sale. I need to see a copy of the person's cashier's check that they gave you. Wow. We have to document and track everything. And this is the kind of stuff that... So if you didn't keep paperwork or whatever, guess what? You're hightailing it over to the DMV or something to see if you can get a copy of this stuff I because think this I need is a, a requirement. I need a, I need a flow chart. I know. Th these are the things that, that can... So. All right, Slow so things down. we talked about a large deposit net, but what if it's just, what if you know up front that you're getting a gift because you know you're going FHA and you need 3.5% down, then what? Right. I need well, a, a gift. Right, and, that, and that's why I tell people, you know, don't do anything, especially on the bank accounts. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of money, you know, so, fraud and money laundering happened during the, the heyday years. Um, the crazy years. So I tell people, don't do anything without talking to your loan officer so first. So Call wait, your loan is, officer first. This is what I'm hearing. When you're in the middle of the loan process, you should stay home every night, sit in front of the couch, <laughs> don't watch TV because you'll be corrupt with the politics that's going on. <laughs> Probably. And just wait for your loan officer to call you, right? Is that and all you tell you do? all of the paperwork that don't they do now need. Don't do anything else. <laughs> you know, Can they all, eat and drink? <laughs> Can they shower? Thing. Just, just be careful with anything that you do with your accounts because it is very important. We are going to go back two months, so if you say, "Oh yeah, but I did that like you know last month," well, guess what? They're, it's going to come up, so they're going to need a two-month history of things. So. If, if there has been any money movement, please talk to your loan officer first. Have them help you um, figure out what has to be documented. Okay, so but this is the stuff that slows things down, people. It's crazy, all the things that can right. come up. What about divorce decree? When is that going to pop up and why they ask for it? Right, divorce decree. That's another really good one. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> let me just tell you right away, and this might be sexist, I'm sorry, but if you are a male. <laughs> You're not sorry. And it says on the application, <laughs> unmarried, but you have a dependent they are going to ask for a copy of the divorce decree or the child support agreement or something. They are going to assume, and I hate to say that, but they are going to assume that you are you might be paying child support. So they need to see the divorce decree. So if you mark on in the in that section on the 1003 that says you have a dependent, mm -hmm. they're going to ask for it. Just yes. and that you know that's not unexpected, but. People don't expect that. Well, right. why do I have to prove that? I got divorced, you know, right. ten you know, years ago. Exactly. And, and I got to tell you, when I say to people, I need a copy of a divorce decree, you want to know what I hear? <laughs> Burned it. <laughs> you know? I mean, some people. Do you know? they say that? Yes. Just like that. <laughs> Burned it. <laughs> Great. But, um, it's not a comfortable situation. And, and, and unfortunately, even if they did burn it or get rid of it or whatever, because it's not a comfortable situation in a lot of cases, you know, you're going to have to go back to your attorney and get it. Honestly, huh? these are the things that are going to be needed. Same thing with... <laughs> with going further with bankruptcy. bankruptcy what about bankruptcy papers? Why do you need that? I filed bankruptcy. I really didn't. So you know. my disclaimer, you know, <laughs> umpteen years ago... Right. It right. was in my it was in my past life. I know. I've regrouped so why do we, so why are we need digging bankruptcy that up papers? again? Why and does that come up? And and just for what it's worth, it's not always that it's needed. It's not on every every case. But what happens is keep in mind credit reports are only as good as the creditors that reported to them. So you filed bankruptcy and you had ten credit cards or whatever that you put on your bank in your bankruptcy and were absolved of those. One of those creditors, you know, I'm not going to say any names or whatever, but let's just say ABC <laughs> Company Who? did not report. That's not a real creditor, folks. <laughs> <laughs> She's making it up. They did not report that they um, that you had filed uh, bankruptcy. So consequently, theirs is still showing up bad. Credit reports are only as good as what goes in. So we have to have the bankruptcy papers to prove, yeah, they were included in your bankruptcy All as right. well. I got one more that's going to take a whole show in itself to cover. So we well, need to do a break. <laughs> so, but what about self-employed people? What, That's a whole what other you know, ball game. The one thing that they're going to ask for for self-employed people would, would is going to be a P and L. So if it's like halfway through the year, you're going to need one. So right. just be aware of that. You know, you're going to need a P and L from for the current year. Yeah. Because so, you don't have a current pay stub. But, it makes sense. But you know what? That's a whole show on That's its own. That's a whole show on its own. <laughs> So let's talk to Devin and get his tips for the week, and, and we'll worry about that later, okay? Good idea. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. My name is Devin with McWilliams & Son Air Conditioning. Today, what I have is a digital Honeywell Wi-Fi thermostat. Do you have those old thermostats in your house? Maybe they're mercury, they're old sliders. Did you know those thermostats could be costing you hundreds of dollars a year? How many times do you leave your house and forget to turn your thermostat off or even set the temperature up? That is free cooling that you're wasting while you're not home. 
This thermostat can allow you to correct that issue. If you forget to turn it off when you go home, you can program it to turn off before you leave for work and before you come home to turn back on. That way you're not coming home to a warm house. This thermostat allows you to control your unit wherever you are through a mobile app, either on your phone, or tablet, or even on your computer. Stop wasting money and start saving by giving us a call at McWilliams & Sons serving all your AC needs. All right, we're back with the bobbleheads. They're bobbling away. <laughs> Our little guys. All right. Hey, Devin mm -hmm. from McWilliams and Son. Another great tip thank this you, week. Thank you. Thank you, Devin. Thank you for providing those every week. And, you know, we really enjoy Good those. Good tips for people. Yeah. I know. I know. So what's going on in your world in mortgages? <laughs> we want to finish that up? So, yes, we want to finish we up. we want to expect the unexpected. <laughs> right, Dart? Just Right. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is some good information, you know, that you can um, use to you know set the proper expectations we don't want anybody actually, stressing out actually what she's really saying is if you do all these things you will not hate your loan officer <laughs> as much <laughs> at the end of the process am i am i correct yeah i know <laughs> i'm just saying so Sorry. it's a lot it is a lot all right so, so what let, else we have so let's talk about you know since we're going to do a whole show on self-employed yeah that's a whole and, new show and so let's talk about down payment assistance that is that is another um, area because a lot just, of areas have the down payment assistance program. Right, whether it's county, mm -hmm. state, or um, even like St. Pete and stuff has mm -hmm. city um, programs for down payment assistance. No matter what, the down payment assistance um, uh, suppliers, whether it's the county or the city or the uh, state, whoever it is, suppliers. Now. I don't know, for lack of a better <laughs> word, lender. Um, they are going <laughs> to have their funny. own set of guidelines. Keep in mind, and they are going to have their own uh, documentation that they're going to need. So, in addition to some of the stuff that the uh, lender, your primary first mortgage lender, is asking for, keep in mind, and down payment assistance. Those are going to take a little bit longer because once the whole package is done with the lender, then it gets sent to the down payment assistance people because normally they don't take it until after the primary lender has approved the loan because that's part of the package. You have to have your approval with it. And then they're going to ask for possibly additional stuff. And as you and I both know, sometimes it's additional stuff that your primary lender doesn't need, right? Yes. So it can be a whole nother gamut of right. things. So be prepared for that. And you know what else, Delene? What? How come you didn't tell me you had another property? <laughs> this time... <laughs> You know, here we are. We're 45 days into this, and all of a sudden, oh, by the way, oh, I, have by that, the way. I have that little lot out that, in Tennessee. That, yeah, exactly. Oh, for me. <laughs> well, we really just use it for fishing. Sorry, yeah. I get my pillow back. Okay, so again, it goes to be upfront with your loan officer and every single piece of property but that it's you not own. In Florida. And or or people say, oh, but I own that with my brother. It's a family property, or whatever. Or if I your have, name is on it. Or if I I don't have a mortgage. Even. Right, I don't have a mortgage on it. But if you still have taxes. I don't have a house on it, it's just a piece of land or whatever. You still have taxes. And on it, it still comes up and it adds I, into your debt ratio. Right. How often does that happen? Every time I throw a pillow at you? <laughs> not Which not is, often. But, I but it's throw just, a pillow at it's you just, more. you know, oh, uh, uh, just to keep people's minds open that these are some of the stuff that got <laughs> thrown right. at us I know. last all right. minute. So, all right, uh, appraisals have gotten more expensive. What about appraisals? You know, I'm already paying you 450 bucks or 475 bucks or 425 bucks. And now all of a sudden, it's You're hitting more. me for another 150. Right. Why? What happened? Reinspections. Oh! Reinspections, reinspections. So, to our loan officer that partners, I mean, head. our uh, realtor <laughs> partners out there, please let your loan officers know if there's anything wrong with the house up front. Well, a couple of things. First of all, please make sure the utilities are all on. <laughs> if it's a bank owned property. It's so crazy. Oh, I didn't put the, the water on the appraiser electric goes on, out. And then got, the borrower has to pay another 150 bucks. 150 bucks for the appraiser to go back out. And, and no, don't expect the appraiser to flip the switch and turn it on. They're not going to do that because they don't know why it's off. Maybe it's going to be a fountain out of the toilet or something if there's something wrong with it. They don't know. They're not going to turn the electric on and they're not going to turn the water on even if the switches are right there. You know, true story. My property I sold. Yeah. The old people pulled out the dishwasher and they slid. They used theirs and they slid one back in mine. And it wasn't connected. And they turned on the sink and the hose, 
and all the water just See? You know, all through the cabinet. There so you go. You just never know. Which is why the appraiser is not going to touch it. Exactly. The appraiser is not going to turn just, that on. So you just never know what's going to happen. As the realtor, the listing agent, please make sure that you have the utilities on. Um, otherwise, they're going to go back out. But, and if there's anything wrong with the house, please let your loan officer know oh yeah, up like front. The, <laughs> By the way, we're getting this fixed or we're getting that fixed or, you know, something like that. Right. This is going to come. The loan officer does not go out and inspect the property. So we don't know what's out there and what it looks like. So please make sure those things are noted up front <sighs> so that we don't send the appraiser I'm out exhausted. right away. I'm exhausted <laughs> from all this. So just expect the unexpected. Right. That's all. Just go through it with an open mind. And now, and set proper expectations, please. When you're you writing a contract, that. I know when you're writing you a contract, say it please again. for 45 days. Say it again. <laughs> say it again, Delin. Set proper say expectations <laughs> with your seller. The sellers don't know. They don't sell houses every day, so they don't know how long these things. They don't know about, about trade. They don't know about all these things buyer. that happen. He knows what's coming. Right. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> so please set proper expectations with your buyers and proper expectations, expectations, especially with your sellers, that this is what to expect. Give 45 days. Every single loan officer out there is going to close it in faster than 45 days if they can. But please put 45 days on the contract because we never know out of this list what might pop up. Well said. All right, let's talk about community <laughs> events. It sounds like so much more fun. What do you think, I know. Darth? Okay. Oh, wait. Can he come? Okay. I think he should come to some <laughs> of your meet talk. and greets. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think he should. He'd be a hit. Hey, if he brings an envelope with a campaign check on it, he can come. Come He's on. He's your pal. Come on, pal, Darth. Hi, Darth. All right, so what do we got Maybe you should up? have him collecting. Maybe we'll get more money. Handing out, out envelopes. <laughs> He's a little more forceful than me, huh? All right, so what do you got coming up, Barry? I got, I got a meet and greet coming up at Kickin' Wings in Hudson on 52 on August the 18th. Great place. That Great restaurant. Be, that should be good. They have, like, the most phenomenal wings. And I think they have, like, I think they're, like, is it, what's the uh, 31 flavors? Baskin Robbins. Yeah, Baskin Robbins. Yeah, ice cream, well, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would. That's why I gave it to you. I know. <laughs> they have that many flavors of wings, I think, up there. So they're really, really good. So and that is on the 18th? 18th of 5 August. 5.30. Yes. And then we have other things coming up. Um, big event in September, of course. One of our favorites. Yes. Bowling for Boobs. Bowling for Boobs. Fundraiser for American Cancer Society. And that is on September 27th. Yes. And that is at Lane Glow Bowling in Newport Ritchie on Old 54. There are two. So it's the one on Old 54. But you do have to pre-register for that. And our lanes go fast. Yep. i got to tell you, it's a so fun go event. On it's a blast. WPBA. Talk biz right. for that one. And re is it all? Is it is it live now? Is everything all yes. set to, that they can register their team um, on there? Probably by the time they watch this, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if not, camera. if you have any issue or problem, but please give us a call. Just give Barry a call or me a call or something, and, and we'll then, we'll register your team for you. And then you. we got one more meet and greet over at Fiddler's Green, August thirty first. We skipped right over that one. Sorry. But that's okay. <laughs> that's all good, and that's going to be fun too. That'll be at Fiddler's Green right here in Trinity, and thirty uh, first. Yeah, that's cool. at I believe at six o'clock in the evening for that one, and then we're going to in October. Stuff going on. I think I forgot the date. October. Third or the fourth, we're going to have the. Uh, I'm going to look for that because that, that's my full disclaimer. We're going to have trivia night, which oh, is going to be great. That's always fun. Yes, that'll be a lot of fun. Bottom line, people, you know what? Get involved in your community. It's yep. a lot. There's a lot going uh, on all the time. October there's always 4th. something to go on. October to go 4th. To. And you can go on berryforpasco.com to check out and follow all these events. That's berryforpasco.com. So. That's lots to do. Yeah, Fun stuff going on all you know, the time. If you don't want to hang out with Darth Vader, hang out with us. That's what I would say. So <laughs> We're a lot more fun. <laughs> so make sure you get us out on social media. Like us. Share us. All that fun stuff. You always Tweet. Say that. Blah, 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 Tweet. blah, blah. I know. All that. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'm not the social media person you are. You know, you need to you go are. on vacation again so you can be on Facebook. You were on like every day. You know what that's funny about that? I wasn't. It was my nieces. They were like tagging me and everything. <laughs> my nieces, are, they're young. That's they're hilarious. tagging me and everything. But it, oh, it works. So. Thank you everyone for watching. We appreciate you. We are today and every day. Moving forward. We'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye.